Okay, sports fans, welcome back. This is Dave King DDS. We're going to be talking about Seric tie base restoration. So before we jump into the material, which is great material and I think you're really going to like it, I want to remind you all, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dave King DDS, and like these videos so that we can keep making more of them. So let's dig in. Um, today we're going to be talking about several things. Um, well, let me step back. So this um, video that you're watching is the first in a series of several that's going to dig into how to restore uh, a dental implant with Seric and Tybase, um, also a scan body. So we're going to talk first and foremost. Right now, we're going to do this course overview, um, dig into the course information, talk about some case studies. Um, that's probably where the first video will end. Second video is going to talk about parts and pieces. The lab uh, design process will be its own unique individual video and then some lab processes and then some con conclusions. So you're looking at several videos here. Um, the slide number is almost 200 so you can keep track with me as we're going. But basically this is meant to be um, a kind of detailed introduction to Seric and Tybase. Um, hopefully it'll be helpful, hopefully it'll be useful, um, but there's a lot of information we have to go through. So bear with me as we're digging into it, um, and please, 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 please let me know what questions you have and how I can help. This is one of my first cases. Um, you'll notice that it's in stone, it's in yellow stone here. So I want you to remember here that as you're starting to use Tybase or Seric for that matter, um, take some time to do it away from the patients. Um, do it indirectly. Pretend you're a lab for a few days or a few, you know, a couple of weeks when you first start using it um, so that you can hone your skills. We certainly want you to practice, um, but we don't necessarily want you to practice um, poorly. So I want you to make sure you're delivering high quality restorations to your patients and oftentimes that takes a few tries. So design them away from the patient um, in a way that you can control all the variables that you're not stressed, you're not worried about time, and the patient's not sweating sitting there looking at you trying to design their crown. Okay, this is a, a picture of beautiful, uh, from the beautiful Sandia Mountains, Albuquerque, the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico is right over here. This is Tramway, you can see that little black line. This is Rio Rancho kind of wrapping around the mountain. This is where I lived for about three and a half years in Albuquerque. Beautiful place, wonderful place to live. Um, the reason I show you this picture is to remind you to keep the big picture in mind. Um, we don't want to just try to focus in on one little car that you can see on Tramway. Can't even really see it, I'm just making that up. Um, you don't want to just focus on one little minutia of the picture, but look at the, the picture as a whole. And correlating that to dentistry, specifically with implant restorations, we don't want to only focus on tie base specific design processes. If there's a different modality that's going to work for your patient, whether it be sending it to a lab, um, whether it be doing an indirect impression, having them make a custom zirconia abutment, using a stock abutment, or using tie base, whatever works best, I want you to bear that in mind. That is the best for the patient. There's not one size fits all. We don't want to be the jack of all trades. Um, with regard, we don't want Seric to, I'm sorry, Seric tie base to necessarily do everything. Although in my personal private practice, um, I think Seric and tie base, I restore 99.8% of all my restorations. So this is a beautiful picture from halfway up the Sandia Mountains. And then I'm going to show you a different perspective from somewhere over here where we used to live. That is the mountains where we were just at. So let me back up. So this picture, you can see where the next picture was taken from roughly over there. So there's the mountains. I was up in this canyon area somewhere. This is my little, she was then about four year old daughter. Um, again, beautiful view. New Mexico has wide open spaces, big skies. It's just beautiful to be there. But remember, keep, keep the big picture in mind. What's best for this patient today may not be best for the next patient tomorrow, um, especially when it comes to implant restorations. Um, they're a little more complex, a little more challenging, so choose what's best for that patient. So what do you need? Where are you at in your practice? What are you expecting to learn from this course? Um, and what do you need help with? So this is all about you, and I want you to remember that as we're going through this, I'm happy to help you in any way that I can. 
Um, this is about you. I've done this a lot. I've had a lot of uh, practice. I don't claim to know everything, but if I can help you, please let me know. I'm toward the end of the course, and if you want to comment in the comments below uh, my contact information, please feel free to text or email or call. I'm happy to help when I can. Um, some customized learning is great. You know, SarahDoctors.com has tons and tons of information that I've used, many of us have used to learn Sarek. Uh, my YouTube channel certainly has, um, I think I just surpassed 100 videos that a lot of them are really helpful when you're digging into Sarek tie base and initial Sarek design processes. But how can I help you? Please let me know. All right, so course objectives there are three. First and foremost, we want to correctly identify all the key elements of implant abutments and crowns. Secondly, we want to explain the elements of two different types of restorations, the monolithic and the two-piece restoration. And then thirdly, we want to achieve a restoration that's both aesthetic, meaning it looks good, and efficacious, meaning it works well. So those are our big goals. That's what we're shooting for. All right, so we're going to get through to the end of the course. We're going to reevaluate, and hopefully we've been able to answer and address these three objectives, okay? Next, a little bit about me. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I graduated from Liberty High School in Liberty, Missouri, outside of Kansas City. Went to Central Missouri State University, um, which is in Warrensburg, Missouri, uh, as a music major. And this is something that a lot of my patients don't know about me. I started playing the jazz trumpet because my dad bought me a trumpet when I was uh, 13 years old, brought it home and said, here you go, Dave, give this a try. I loved it, um, really enjoyed it. So after doing music major for a year, took a two year break, went to Taiwan as a missionary. So naturally, <laughs> Obviously, my Chinese is uh, um, regressing since it's been 11 years. Um, anyway, after my two-year missionary stint in Taiwan, which I loved and enjoyed, um, loved the people of Taiwan, loved the Chinese people in general, um, I changed my major to business, went back to Central Missouri State. Um, then right here, I married the daughter of an orthodontist and noticed the switch from business and music to biology, chemistry, dentistry. Um, so I graduated dental school in 2006, started to practice in Liberty, Missouri, outside of Kansas City, also one, bought one in Independence. And then I joined a small group, and then I um, left that group when things didn't quite work out the way I'd hoped they would, um, and joined a Pacific Dental Services supported practice. So PDS, Pacific Dental Services, is a dental support organization that partners with dentists like me um, to assist in managing the dental office and basically serve as an equity partner. Um, looking back, I wish I would have done this from day one. Um, for me, this works really, really well. I really enjoy the camaraderie. I enjoy the support. I enjoy not having to balance checkbooks at the end of the night. I enjoy going home and going home to my family instead of going home to QuickBooks. Um, I enjoy working with the company Pacific Dental Services. And if you want any more information, please don't hesitate to contact me um, or just look up Pacific Dental Services. So that's my story, that's me. Currently I'm practicing in the St. Louis area. Um, we relocated back from Albuquerque to be closer to family. So why do I do what I do? And this is a good question for you to ask yourself. How many of us reaffirm why we do what we do on a daily basis? Is this something that you really can focus on from the standpoint of what your primary drive is? Um, if you, you know, think uh, in the morning when you get to work, wh why am I here? Um, for me, this is why I do what I do. It's my kids. Um, I do what I do because I love my kids and I want to provide them with a lifestyle, um, and provide them with a comfortable lifestyle. Um, we certainly aren't super rich, um, but we have been comfortable and I'm grateful for that. And that's why I'm in dentistry um, for two reasons. Number one, to serve my kids and to serve my patients. And then my primary person in my life, my wife, um, I want to make sure that I keep my wife and children happy 
And that's why I do what I do. So what is your why? Um, take a moment, think about that, really consider it. Why do you do what you do? Why are you here? Are you here only for the paycheck? Are you here only to bring home the bacon, so to speak? Um, a lot of us have that motivation, but I find if you're service-centered, um, serving our patients, serving our families, serving your spouse, um, serving your significant other, then that can lead to a great deal of personal and professional satisfaction. Why do you do what you do? All right, let's dig into some case studies. So the first one we're gonna talk about one of my favorite patients, Carla. Um, Carla is a really fun lady. She had a five unit bridge on the lower right, a PFM bridge that was done in Mexico 30 years ago that had lasted 30 years. And I found something wrong with it and decided we ought to consider redoing that bridge. Um, anyway, the bridge failed. The Zirconia bridge failed. The second Zirconia bridge failed. And the third uh, PFM bridge failed. And so I decided I'm going to give you credit for what you paid against some implants. And we did some implants. Now I've placed plenty of implants, so I put in these implants. Um, put them all in, in one sitting. We waited three or four months. Then we put some crowns on them. And this is the design process. Um, toward the end of the design process in the CEREC 4.4 software. And this right here is the, one of the pictures I showed you at the very beginning of the stone. So these are the two restorations, one, a couple of my very first two CEREC tie base implant restorations. So you notice the date here, that was, uh, what is that, July of 2014, um, when I did the second set of her restorations. So this I think was about, I don't know, a year before that, um, 2013. Um, when I did her uh, upper two on the upper left where she had a, a bridge that had failed before as well. So this is Carla. Everything turned out great. Um, here's the first two that I did, the two from the stone model picture at the beginning. And then here's the second three that I did. And we've got uh, screw retained, screw retained, and cement retained. Um, let me get all those lines off of there. So turned out really really well you know a couple of concerns for me it looked like she had some bone loss in that area and we monitored this and there was absolutely no change the threading the level of the bone in relation to the threading was consistent constant never changed um, these contacts were nice and secure all she had to do is floss them and make sure that she didn't get food impacted in there um, so we did have an, a little bit of initial bone loss but in the end it was very stable long term so that's Carla. Let's dig into another case. This is one of those unicorn cases that you maybe see once in your lifetime where you have a patient walk in that says, I'm missing some teeth, can you put in some implants today? And so we ended up putting in five implants in one sitting. First time I'd ever seen the patient. Um, of course, he was having pain over here because of that abscess. This one wasn't bothering him, but I made sure I talked with him about it. Um, and he didn't want to do anything about it, so he let that one go. But we did place five implants, same sitting. And here is the post-implant placement. We did a bunch of bone graft in this area, put a membrane over the top. Everything turned out really, really good, long-term. Um, he came back a couple of months later. We scanned and designed uh, a bunch of uh, implant restorations using CEREC and Tybase, and you can see these little white scan bodies. Um, the scan bodies, as you'll come to learn, come in two flavors, white and gray. The white ones uh, are designed for the uh, blue cam, but the Omnicam will read them just fine, and this is an Omnicam, obviously. So we designed all of his restorations at the same time. Turned out great. Here is his almost post-delivery. Um, notice that we hadn't put the crown on tooth number seven there. Um, we had put the abutment on and I wanted an x-ray before um, we cemented the crown on. All the other ones were screw retained, as you can see, screw retained. Um, but this guy, we had waited um, to put the crown on until we got the x-ray. So in the end, turned out really, really well. Everything healed up beautifully fully functional teeth. Again, this is a once in a lifetime patient where you have them come in and want to place five implants all in one sitting the first time you've ever seen them. So that is the end of that, uh, this video. Um, let's see, there it is. So end of video number one. 
I talked just a little bit about the course overview, what we're going to include. Um, talked about some course, uh, I'm sorry, some case studies. Um, next video we're going to dig into obviously parts and pieces where we'll kind of really get into the minutia and talk about um, what goes with what, how they go together, etc, etc. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.